Welcome to the second part of IES solved problems. In first problem, we have to find F's complement of the number 2BFD. It is a hexadecimal number. And if you remember, in case of R's complement, in case of R's complement, we have R raised to power small n minus capital N, where capital N is the number whose R's complement we have to calculate. So in this case, the number is 2BFD. The number is 2BFD and small n is the number of digits. So in this case, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 digits. So small n is equal to 4 and r is equal to 16 because it is a hexadecimal number. And in case of r minus 1's complement, r minus 1's complement, we have r raised to power n minus capital N minus 1 or we can write it as r raised to power n minus 1 minus capital N. Now we will put the values, we will put the values and we have 16 raised to power 4 because r is 16, n is 4, minus 1, minus 2, b, f, d. And when you solve this, 16 raised to power 4 minus 1, you will get f, 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 f minus 2bfd so this is what we have to do to find out to find out f's complement of the number 2bfd so let's move to it we will perform the subtraction f f f f and we have to subtract 2bfd from it so 2bf D. Now f is equal to 15, f is equal to 15 and d is equal to 13 because a is equal to 10, b is equal to 11, c is equal to 12, d is equal to 13, e is equal to 14 and f is equal to 15. These are the representations of 10 to 15 in case of hexadecimal number system and we have to subtract d from f so we will have 2 so we will get 2 here f minus f is 15 minus 15 so we will get 0 f minus b it means 15 minus 11 b is 11 so 15 minus 11 and this will give us 4 so we have 4 f minus 2 it means 15 minus 2 this will give us 13 13 is d so we have d so D402 is the answer. This is the F's complement of the number 2BFD. And out of these four options, option C is correct. So this is all for problem number one. Now we will move to problem number two. In the second problem, we have to find the number of digit one. We have to find the total number of digit one present in the binary representation of 3 multiplied by 512 plus 7 multiplied by 64 plus 5 multiplied by 8 plus 3 and we have to find the total number of digit 1. There are two ways to solve this problem. In first method we will simply find the binary equivalent of this decimal number and in the second method we will try to solve this by the help of one shortcut. So let's move to method number 1. Method 1. First we will simplify this we have 3 multiplied by 512 plus 7 multiplied by 64 plus 5 multiplied by 8 plus 3. 3 multiplied by 512 is 1536. 7 multiplied by 64 is 448. 5 multiplied by 8 is 40 plus 3. And when you add them, you will get 2027. So this is the number in decimal and we want binary equivalent of this number and once we have the binary equivalent we can easily count the total number of 1 and we already know how to convert a decimal number to binary let's do this quickly the number is 2027 we will divide this 
by 2 because in binary number system base is equal to 2 when we divide 2027 by 2 we will get 1013 as the quotient and 1 is the remainder we will do the same thing we will divide 1013 by 2 this will give us 506 and 1 as the remainder then we have 2530 one two six one six three zero then we have three one one fifteen one and when you divide fifteen by two the quotient is equal to seven the quotient is seven and the remainder is one seven divided by two will give us three as quotient and remainder is one again and when you divide 3 by 2 quotient is 1 with remainder 1 and finally when you divide 1 by 2 quotient is 0 and remainder is 1 this one here is the MSB this one here is the MSB the most significant bit and this one here is the LSB the least significant bit so the binary number is 1 1 1 1 1 1 we are writing like this the binary number is one 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 then we have zero one zero one one so this is the binary equivalent of the number two zero two seven and if we count the total number of ones we have six ones plus seven eight nine so there are total nine ones and this is our answer so this is the first method and in this we simply converted the decimal number to binary in the second method we have a shortcut in the second method we have one shortcut and we will consider 2 raised to power n equals to 1 so this is the shortcut we will consider 2 raised to power n equals to 1 where n is equal to 0 1 2 and so on so the only thing we have to do is to convert this to 2 raised to power n form let's see how we can do it we have 3 multiplied by 512 plus 7 multiplied by 64 plus 5 multiplied by 8 this is very important trick and it will save a lot of time in exam we only have to convert this to this form 3 can be written as 2 raised to power 1 plus 1 multiplied by 512 we can write as 2 raised to power 9 plus 7 we can write as 2 raised to power 2 plus 2 raised to power 1 plus 1 multiplied by 64 is 2 raised to power 6 plus 5 we can write as 2 raised to power 2 plus 1 multiplied by 8 is 2 raised to power 3 so we have 2 raised to power 3 plus 3 we can write as 2 raised to power 2 plus 1 so this is how we can write in the form of 2 raised to power n and uh, we will further simplify this by opening the brackets and we will have 2 raised to power 10 2 raised to power 1 multiplied by 2 raised to power 9 is 2 raised to power 10 1 multiplied by 2 raised to power 9 is 2 raised to power 9 in the same way we will have 2 raised to power 8 2 raised to power 7 plus 2 raised to power 6 plus 2 raised to power 5 2 raised to power 3 2 raised to power 2 plus 1 so this is what we have and I have already told you we will consider 2 raised to power n equals to 1 so 2 raised to power 10 is 1 2 raised to power 10 is 1 2 raised to power 9 is 1 2 raised to power 8 is also 1 and the same way we have we have 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 total 9 ones as our answer so this is the same the result is same if we compare it with the method number 1 we got 9 ones by simply converting the decimal number to the binary and we also got 9 ones by the shortcut method so I will prefer the shortcut method in the exam because it will save a lot of time the only thing you have to do is to convert the given decimal number like this and once you have this form you can simply count the total number of ones and if you compare the answer with these options you will find option number B 
is correct so for problem number two option number b is the answer so this is all for this lecture see you in the next one